When I was in eighth grade, I learned, not in school, but from the adults that I would chat up at the coffee shop. I'm from a small town, there was only one coffee shop. I learned about the climate crisis. Now at that time, we did not call it a crisis. We did not even use the word change. It was called environmentalism. I was so alarmed as an eighth grader that there was this looming, catastrophic problem that so many failed, failed to like believe in or even consider properly. We are now in a time where the effects of the climate crisis don't have such a far off horizon. At that time, when I was in eighth grade, it was like 30 years from today. As an eighth grader, 30 years is like, what does that even mean? We're now in a time where it's not even 10 years. It's actually happening right now. Like we're in it as humans on this planet right now. We are the generations that get to deal with this issue. And it's impossible to really look at the climate crisis and take it in when you examine human history to not, not just see it, but also feel it inside of yourself that it's intersectionality with systemic racism. This whole thing has been a really exhilarating experience of language creation, because that is something with the climate crisis in this time period that we struggle with as humans. We don't have the proper language to really express what it is. We didn't just have to create language during this Down to Earth program, we also had the opportunity to create art. Thank you artists for all the hard work you did throughout the year and for graciously sharing with us what you have learned and explored in one of what I think is the most beautiful place in Washington, D.C. Um, and then, of course, some thanks to um, my board and my staff members who are here tonight. They tirelessly work to make sure this park is someplace we can all enjoy, advance equitable access so everyone has a space to be, to think about, to reflect about their own lives, and all of these critical issues that we are facing today between climate, racial injustices, all of this affects all of us every day, and we need space and fresh air to deal with everything that we're going through. As you all engage with this project, I hope that you all listen and think about the opportunity that it lies for our future here in the city, but also consider our environment. I think that's the most important thing is that we can create into oblivion, but if we don't worry about the earth that we're on, we won't have a, a, a future to live on. You know, to Julianne's point, we won't have another hundred years. So if we continue to be a community as we are now, learn from what these artists have created and what they have learned from, the, from this community and what they put out in their art, you know, I encourage you to engage with that. When, when, co when the COVID shutdown happened, it kind of gave me a lot of time to think about like things that my grandmother did and spaces that I ate out of as a kid. Um, and so it got me back to thinking about um, all of the things I've learned about those spaces since I ate all of that stuff and kind of really asking a question of like, what is it like to kind of occupy the spaces that many people turn away from as being like, too dirty or too polluted in some way to actually be present for eating. And so that was kind of the start of this, um, looking at this like amazing space um, that so many people have worked to kind of recuperate to the point where it is and look at this as a potential place of abundance. To be recognized in my hometown means the world to me. And I've always wanted my fashion to be seen in a fine art space because I'm a fine artist. I consider myself a fine artist, but this means so much more to me because this is how I want people to see my work, you know? Not just coming fast down the runway, not just merchandise that you can buy, but something that has a story and a deeper meaning behind it. We need to understand, we need to come together and understand this one word that covers all of it. That word is called respect. Respect the earth, respect the environment, respect your neighbor, respect the neighborhood, respect people and their differences that colors every damn thing. We've had a lot of disrespect going around. I'm tired of disrespect. I want people to learn how to live together. But I really hope that you take time to follow up with people you maybe met here tonight and continue conversations and continue being curious about how you can not just make the environment better, but also make your community better by connecting with each other and listening and just realizing that there is joy and hope out there despite all of the disparities that we do encounter. 
on a daily basis. All right, thank you for coming here tonight.